Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, we're going to create a lead bass sound that is similar to Stefan Bodzin. Last week, I posted a video on how to create pads for a techno song. After I posted the song, one of my friends approached me and he was asking if I could have a look into creating a sound that is similar to Stefan Bodzin's lead bass sound. For those of you who are not yet familiar to Stefan Bodzin, he is one of the biggest names in techno music. He is also considered to be the founder of melodic techno, a genre that is really popular today. There are a few videos out there showing how to achieve this specific sound. Most of these videos focus on the thought process while the creation of the sound is going on. I'm going to try a different approach in this video. I will break down in steps, easy to follow steps, what makes this sound special. So hopefully by the end of this video you will have a better starting point and a source of inspiration for your next music production. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on electronic music production, gear reviews, and songwriting ideas. Be part of the community and improve your music production skills. Here we are in an Ableton Live session, and in order to make this easier to follow, I'm going to break down in four steps. We have chords, oscillators, automation, and effects. So let's start with the chords. Most of the chords used in this type of music, uh, deep techno and melodic techno, are pretty simple. They end in the same note as they start. So let's have a look at what would the progression be. One, one key that he used a lot in this type of music is A sharp major. So let's start by uh, putting some notes in A sharp major. Another characteristic that makes Stefan Botzin's music special is the way he combines full notes with quarter and eight notes. For example, I'm using this whole note, but I'm only letting it play for around three quarters. The rest I'm going to fill with arpeggiated chords or something that is similar in the key of this chord. And for this last one, I'm going to break it in two. I'm going to have. That's pretty decent. Again, this is not up to Stefan's bots in Scalibur. This is just something to give you inspiration in your next productions or uh, even uh, who knows, maybe you can even copy the template. I'm going to make these templates available. So check out the description of the video. Next, we're moving on to automation. Now, in order to create more drama, more tension with these arpeggiated chords, he is actually opening and closing a filter. He does this by using automation. Now, there's different ways that you can automate filters but the easiest one that will actually help us achieve the effect that we want is to actually use Automation 9 in Ableton to automate the cutoff frequency. Let's see what we would like to achieve. Uh, 
I think that uh, it's too basic. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm going to detune the second oscillator but about seven semitones and one octave higher. That's uh, a little bit more like what we wanted to sound. I also added a sub bass. We'll see if we're gonna keep it or no, but for now we're gonna play with this sub bass on. Let's start automating the filter. Let's add the Q3, see what happens in the frequency spectrum as well. Okay, let's have a look at the filter. Let's see what the filter is doing. I think it's opening a little bit too much. If you want to fine tune automation lines, you press shift, then click on the point you want to drag, and this will give you the possibility to adjust to finer points, not just tens, you can go to the 100s. But I think that we're starting with the filter a little bit too much. Too open. I like it, but we can still work on it. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to give a slope to my automation lines. You can do this by pressing your Alt key, and then you will see this little curve line appear, and then you move your mouse up and down. I wanted to give my curve a concave shape, so I'm going to move my cursor down a little bit. And even this one, you can open a little bit faster. Okay, I like how that sounds. I'm going to use a compressor as well, but I don't want to use the one I have in Ableton. I'm going to use something else. Let's see what we have. Let's see. Let's have a look at this sub again. I think I wanted to give it a little bit more power here. Maybe detune these voices a little bit.
Okay, I think that's about it for our automation. Next, let's move on to effects. And we want to add a reverb to the song because we want it to fill as much space as possible. We want it to emphasize the drama and the tension in the song. Let's see what options we have. We want to create the idea of spaciousness. So we want something that is spacious and lush. Let's see what options we have. Let's go to... There's two ways in applying effects to your tracks. You can apply them as an insert and you can apply them as a send and return channel. In this particular case, we want to apply it as an insert because we want the reverb to be the same for the whole duration of the chord. We don't want it to change, right? We want it to give the same impression of space. We want the space to stay the same. Let's see how it sounds. That's a little bit too much. I'm pretty happy with that okay I'm pretty happy with that next the, the other effect that we want to add is delay this delay is going to be applied as a send and return channel because we only want to apply this effect when the filter is opening we want to emphasize that um, we want to emphasize that emotion even more let's see what options we have and for this one again you can use the stock delays that Ableton comes with The trick with this type of delay is to have it end before the next send kicks in. And if not, we're just going to have to automate more. I'm pretty happy with that. I just want it to end a little bit faster. So I'm going to put an automation in this guy, in the output of the effect processor. Again, this is not up to Stefan Bodzin's caliber, but this is just to give you guys an idea of 
how those type of baselines lead baselines are created and of course you can play with the oscillators a little bit more depending if you want to add yeah, a little bit more bass actually let's add a little bit of distortion okay let's see what we can do with this guy let's have a look at the presets actually let's do bass Let's hit this guy. I feel that this note is uh, full note can still use a little bit of granulation to it so let's see how we can add that i feel like i want it i feel like i want it to move up and down so let's try adding an oscillator to I think it also needs a little bit of compression after the whole processing is done. So we're going to add this pretty hard happy with that now let's see if we can do something with this node the long i think we can achieve that by automating the drive function in serum also we can have a look here in the effects section we don't have anything going on but we can add compressors we can add reverb here
all right guys so uh, that was it for this week's video i hope you found this um, useful and it's going to help you in your next music productions